Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is part 3 of Naruto, student of Madara. If you guys enjoyed this what if, and want to see part 4 of it, comment down below, and let me know. The like goal for this video is 100 likes. So like this video, to let me know that you're interested in this series, and you want the next part. And go ahead, and check out other what ifs in the channel. Before we start please do support for more awesome content. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a like, and also share this video with your friends. So let's start this video. His breathing was calm, and even, you couldn't see any inkling of fear and anxiety on his steady form. He had been training for the last two years for this, to become stronger, to kill. He had been put through the toughest training, he suffered broken bones, concussions, overwhelming blood loss, you name the injury and he had it. But not once did a wound ever leave a scar, there was no mark of battle, or proof that he was wounded, only his skin which had one scar, a scar that looked like it was hit by a lightning bolt and arced outwards. Ever since that time two years ago, he had become a changed person, he held no remorse, no hesitation, there was no shred of forgiveness in his heart. There was nothing in his heart. He doesn't remember what the trees looked like nor the sky. He hasn't breathed in the scent of flowers in eternity, he couldn't remember what leaves sounded like when they flew in the wind. He hadn't felt the light of the sun beam down upon him, he couldn't remember what shape were the clouds. He wouldn't remember the feeling of glory the mountains gave off. He couldn't remember the faces of the people he called friends, no, family. The only thing he could remember from coming to the place he was at now, was blood red eyes and a chirping hand. The only thing he knew what was certain at the moment, was the sweat on his body, and the katana in his hand. The blonde spiky haired boy was now a man, at the age of 15 he could pass off as a 19 year old. He was shirtless, and you could see all his rippling lean muscles even through clothing, muscle he had gained after intense training routines and exercises, that many would believe he would die from such a workout. He had bloody bandages on his hands, signs that he would hit something and tilt to bricks. The attire he was wearing was black armored pants that covered his thighs and calves, black snug boots with claws on the toes, and spike spurs on the heel. And a light blue rope belt with the end hanging between his inner thigh and crotch ending below his knee. The katana's blade was silvery blue, and the sword had no guard, just the way the blonde man liked it. Instead of the usual grip for katanas this one was completely metal, and had a grey grip, and to top it off the sword, had a long 23 inch blue rope that was connected to the hilt. He wondered how strong he really was, he had no one to compare his power to, except for the old man. But he was old, and he couldn't fight anymore, his withered body could barely walk 5 meters in a distance, so he really did have no one. Time was every shinobi's enemy, it was always ticking for everyone even him. He believed he was extremely powerful, given the amount of chakra he has, and the way he could use it. That was another thing he had improved, was his chakra control. Previously he had quite horrendous chakra control, but that wasn't his fault, it's just he had too much chakra and he couldn't really use like all of his classmates. He created shadow clones every day until he worked his chakra control to perfection, whether it was by climbing waterfalls while balancing kunais on his fingers at the same time, and simultaneously floating leaves all over his body, some could think that was overkill, but he needed the training. His control was now flawless he could utilize the Hokage's great strength if he wanted to, but he preferred quick white kills over slamming your fist into someone's face, and breaking their jaws at the same time. That's why he chose to take up Kenjutsu, because it complemented his wind nature perfectly. His skill in nature manipulation had taken the most leaps and bounds. He could now cut raging infernos three times his size and half with his wind nature, he could set fire to a waterfall, and shatter tornadoes with his lightning. His genjutsu skill which was impossible for him to do, was now possible thanks to his increased intelligence and control. He could now cast genjutsu without even using the Sharingan. And his genjutsus caused his victims to go brain dead and insane because of his vivid imagination. He could also perform medical ninjutsu, but his prowess in the art was nowhere near that of Sanade's, but it was good enough so if he ever got into a bad situation, he could pull himself out of it. Along with all his other skills his proficiency with weapons, was quite admirable with the Sharingan he could now aim, and throw his kunai with pinpoint strikes, he tested this out by throwing a kunai at a fly, that was buzzing around, bisecting it from its wings. But now he was testing out his reactions and senses. He was blindfolded, the only thing he could use was his hearing, smell, touch, and taste. He was facing multiple white zetsus he charmed to the bone with weapons such as swords, kunais, war fans or just their fists. When they converged on him, he didn't flinch he didn't even move a muscle. He channeled chakra flow into his katana that was designed to absorb the energy. Now his weapon was coated with wind increasing its cutting power and lethality. One Zetsu came up behind him hoping to take him by surprise, but the scarred man turned around and bisected the artificial human. He blocked a flying kunai aimed at the side of his rib, with the flat side of his katana. He grabbed it out of the air and threw at another Zetsu where it pierced the artificial human's skull. He slashed another Zetsu, the wind on his katana, making him more efficiently deadly. He sealed his katana on a portable seal on his right wrist. 
He went through a couple of hand signs and breathed in and shouted. Wind release, great dragon breath technique. He blew out a massive head of a Japanese dragon made of lacerating wind that was four times his size. It flew at the Zetsu with overwhelming speed that it tore apart anything in its path until scraps were left. The Zetsu didn't have time to blink before they dropped to the ground dead bisecting cuts all over their bodies. And if they had blood, he was sure the ground would be coated with it. He unsealed his katana from his wrist and parried a kunai blow to the head from a brave Zetsu. He channeled wind chakra into his sword, which cut through the kunai like butter and killed the Zetsu. He heard movement to his left, and kicked an unfortunate Zetsu in the face, impacting against his jaw, and sending him flying back a few meters away hitting other Zetsus like bowling pins. He heard multiple footsteps running at him, and like before he sealed his katana away. He went through a couple of hand signs, and spoke the name of the Jutsu. Phi release. Dragon flame release song technique. Yelled the blonde man as he spat out a number of dragon-shaped fireheads flying at amazing speeds. The flame heads hit their marks as five Zetsus were incinerated by the hot fire. The man unsealed his katana and started to tear through the ranks of the Zetsus. His taijutsu was interesting as it appeared he was dancing when he was actually using agility mixed in with strength to deal powerful blows to his enemy. The Zetsu cried a battle shout as he went up to attack the man in blind rage at the sight of its brethren being slaughtered. But its surroundings changed all around it looked back behind itself to see all the other Zetsus, but now they look like the blonde man with his eyes blindfolded each holding a katana in hand. Enraged at the sight the Zetsu started to ruthlessly attack its comrades hoping to find out which was its real target. The Zetsu was sadly caught in a genjutsu, where he was culling its friends, as if they were the blonde himself. The man in a swift motion stabbed his katana in the ground, where an unsuspecting Zetsu was trying to crawl his way over to him, but it was rewarded with a sword penetrating through its skull. The blonde then quickly went through some more hand signs. Lightning release, electromagnetic murder. Yelled the man as he slammed his palms on the ground, as an electric wave burst forth, shocking everyone that was caught before their nervous system was fried. They soon dropped to the ground, dead, with heavy thuds, and they were smoldering a little, and lightning was coursing round their bodies. The man picked up his katana again and started channeling his chakra into it. He stabbed a zetsu behind him without even turning around. The clone of Hashirama had tried to sneak up on the man, but it had failed in its attempt. The blonde took the kunai that was in the zetsu's hand channeled some lighting chakra through it, and threw the knife at another zetsu penetrating into its skull, and out the other end and stabbing another in the head as it stopped its flight. The man couldn't see his handiwork, but he knew he scored some points and when the chakra signatures disappeared. Three zetsus jumped him from behind, where the four combatants were locked in close combat. The man dodged a kunai attack from a zetsu, and let it slide past him where he kicked the zetsu and killed it with a lighting charge kunai he had unsealed from his wrist seals. He then killed the other two in a horizontal sweeping slash, where it bisected the two plant men in half, as their torsos fell to the ground leaking white use. The large group of Zetsus started to rush at the lone man with angry looks on their faces, the blonde in retaliation, unsealed a fuma shuriken from his left wrist. He channeled his wind chakra into the large shuriken adding an extra set of rotating blades made of wind, and whispered shuriken shadow clone technique. He threw the one shuriken which then became 100 shuriken, and all of them were wind enhanced, where they cut through the zetsus like sheep to the slaughter, and like a butcher's knife to meat. The man turned and faced another wave of zetsus. Scattering thousand crows jutsu. Said the man as 1000 crows flew in from behind him, he could use this as the jutsu was just sitting around the place. The crows attacked the zetsus distracting them from the real threat. Which was the man and his katana. He passed by them within a blink of an eye, and all their heads were lopped off their shoulders with one fell swoop. One final party of Zetsus rushed at the man trying to end the battle that had been going on. The man sealed his katana and held out his right hand. Instantly Ursengan appeared until the man pumped wind chakra into it which then became a spinning white shuriken with a light blue bowl in the middle. Wind style. Rasen shuriken. Yelled the man as he hurled the shuriken at the Zetsus. When it made contact it expanded into a dome of small wind blades that attacked the Zetsus on a molecular level, and finally killing them as their chakra network was severed. The jutsu was more like a poison, rather than a series of attacks. When the dome died down a crater was left with the zetsus lying on the floor. The man didn't celebrate, he didn't cheer, he just stood there, unwavering, until he turned his attention to someone clapping. There was an extremely old man with a kusarigama in hand clapping as he watched the spectacle with a small smile on his face, but a dark look in his only visible eye. Very good, very good. Praise the man who was unfazed by all the deaths. You have come far, everyone one of those zetsus were at least high chunin level, and yet you made them look like academy students he, no one can dispute your power. Your strength rivals my own back when I was young, and at my prime, but you still require more refinement as you are still not as strong as me, you're at least two thirds of my power back, when I was in my prime, I did say you rivaled me. Said the man with a sickly smirk. And you didn't even use your sharingan against them even more impressive. 
The blonde man removed the cloth around his eyes, revealing a pair blood red pair of fully matured Sharingan, which could probably kill someone just by looking at them. However, they were not his eyes. Those eyes were the eyes the old man had. His original pair, before they were transplanted for another pair, but he passed his own eyes to the young man, and in return blonde gave his own to parched man. He had specky sun-kissed silky blonde hair with chin-link strands that framed the sides of his face, where his sideburns were supposed to be, and he had a few strands that fell between his eyes and parted at the bridge of his nose. Just imagine Dongai Chigo hair but yellow in color, and he had a low specky ponytail which was wrapped halfway with top bandages. Over time his hair had become less wild and untamed, and became smooth and silken losing some of the spike to his hair. He was also 5-9 feet in height, instead of the midget height of 4-11 feet. However the man used to have whisker-like marks on his cheeks, but they were gone revealing nothing. A Sharingan is merely a tool, just having it doesn't make me powerful, unless I train my other skills, then there's no point in using the Sharingan in battle if I get killed. Stated the person blankly as he stared at the old man. Quite right Naruto. The old man then started having coughing fits, and brought a hand to his mouth and coughed blood into his palm. The 15 year old who could pass off as an adult, was slightly worried for his sensei, even though he didn't show it. He walked slowly up to his master and stood before him. You shouldn't overexert yourself with your heavy breathing, Madara sensei said Naruto motionlessly as he stood before the shinobi legend. You will be in a similar situation when it is your time, said Madara as he finished his coughing and glared a little at the blonde. The legendary Chiha was now weak, he could no longer perform the abilities and techniques he had in life, but he was able to raise Naruto to suit his needs and continue his plans, but then there was the problem with the fake Madara, who was manipulating the Akatsuki and Nagato. We'll see about that, said Naruto as he started to walk off toward his bed which was right in front of Madara. At first Naruto was uneasy sleeping in front of his sensei, he got the feeling that he was being watched, and he was partially right, but eventually he got over his unease, and was able to get some rest in front of the mummy. Naruto sheathed his katana back in its sheath which was right next to his bed. And then he dozed off, not dreaming about anything in particular. Madara was watching his apprentice sleep. These past two years had been interesting to say the least. Naruto's potential and power soared when he used the shadow clone jutsu in conjunction with his training. Naruto was easily an S-rank shinobi where even the five kage would have trouble fighting him, although whether he could fight them all at once was a different thing, and he was quite the ingenious shinobi where he quickly came up with ways to overcome his weaknesses and flaws. Such as that last jutsu he used, wind style, Rasen Shuriken. At first Naruto was unable to add as any of his chakra natures into the Rasengan as the result would just blow up in his face, he figured a way out around the weakness with clones however, he could at first only do it with clones, but he said it wasn't practical enough, so he used that Uzumaki blood of his in his imagination to overcome that drawback. He created two seals on the palms of his hands that collects his chakra and stores it. Whenever he wanted to form a Rasen Shuriken, or a chakra nature enhanced Rasengan, he would just activate the seal, and it would convert his chakra into whatever one of his natures he wanted. Not even Madara or anyone else could think up such a diverse way to use seals, although to form the seals took Naruto some time. Around a year was needed until the seals properly formed, and only then you needed to have precise control of your chakra, and be well versed in Fuenjutsu to achieve such a thing. Later when Naruto had nearly finished his daily training, Zetsu and Madara extracted what little of the Kyuubi's chakra Naruto had in his body. They were able to get a small portion of the Kyuubi's chakra from Naruto's body resulting in the loss of his whisker marks on his cheeks. However he still retained his remarkable healing abilities which pleased Madara to no end. But one thing that surprised Madara were the remaining folders that Zetsu brought to him years ago. He would never have guessed what was in those folders, but it also explained some of Naruto's immense potential. Zetsu appeared before Madara, his Akatsuki cloak quite clear in the dark hovel. Yes Zetsu. I have returned with unfortunate news. Spoke Zetsu. I was unable to get the identity of the person who claims to be Madara. In order to find out his identity I must return to Kanohugakure. I don't see the problem to which you're referring to, asked Madara, he didn't see how hard it was to go in and get information. The problem is that the top ranking ninja of the village have seen me on their video surveillance, you don't forget a person like me any day. It's also likely that the Hokage has informed the Jonin of the village about my appearance and infiltration, and they have now stationed their Anbu Black Ops around the village, keeping even greater watch than they did two years, explained Zetsu. Then why don't we just send more white Zetsus? Bit back Madara. Even though the copies can take on the appearance of others, what's stopping Kanoha from discovering that they are not who they say they are, the clones aren't really that strong, and against a ninja village we would need an army. Elaborated Zetsu. Madara didn't say anything other than looking away from Zetsu and staring into space. Do you think he's ready Zetsu? Asked Madara curiously. He wanted to know if Naruto was ready for the task of capturing Jinchurikis, he had to be sure, no matter how powerful Naruto is. 
Only the strongest could face a Bijiru without any qualms or hesitation and he and Hashirama were among the few. He then complimented the Yuan Darime Hokage for facing the strongest among the nine. No doubt in my mind that he is more than ready, spoke Setsu. I was wrong about the prediction that the statue would keep supplying me chakra for three years, and it's been two already, spoke Madara hoarsely. Even with a portion of the Kyubi's chakra filling the statue, it would not be enough to save Madara. In fact it was that chakra that had been keeping him alive up until this moment. The jutsu he used to bring Naruto back to life would take the user's life in return for bringing others back to the world of the living. The statue was a massive source of life, and it still wouldn't be able to save him. However, I only have three months left to live before the statue stops feeding me chakra, and until then I will train Naruto even harder, so that he can kill the fake me. Informed Madara even though it sounded strange to say such a thing. Very well, said Zetsu as he melted with the ground. Nagato acting through his guise of pain, was watching Amagakure in the tallest tower of the village. Come on, must the tallest tower in every city be the lair of the villain? Is there some kind of super villain rule book? Never mind back to pain. Pain called out a voice behind the orange haired man who didn't move to face the voice, because in his mind there was no need. It was his beautiful partner and oldest friend, Conan. She stared at him with an impassive gaze and neutral face as always, the tragedies of life always making her feel pain, but Nagato knew that was just her way of hiding her pain for her pain could also be used against her. Yes Conan, said Pain without turning to look at a raider he kept staring out at his village. We need one more member among the Akatsuki, informed Conan bringing up a subject that was on Pain's mind. I am well aware with Arachiyamaru's defection from the organization we do need to fill his place, but we also need to get the Sky Ring from his possession, before we allow any other member in the Akatsuki. But finding him is like trying to find a speck of salt on a beach, and if we do find him he'll most likely escape like the scavenger he has always been. Spoke Pain with contempt as Orochimaru want on his friend list. Setsu has informed me of a potential candidate, but he has yet to tell me, this person's identity nor his capabilities or anything else. Said Conan still with that neutral tone of speaking. Setsu, he always did have an eye for talent, as a few years ago it was him that informed us of Dadara as a potential member, and he was right, if Setsu is correct about this candidate, then this person might become a potential and powerful recruit. Spoke Pain. Do you think this recruit can be trusted, and even if we do let him into the Akatsuki, will he be able to me, but she was cut off by Pain. Conan, I understand that you have doubts about some of the less savory members of the Akatsuki, such as Sasori and Hidan. Spoke Pain. Conan still had her neutral face, but she knew Pain was right since she never approved of the bloodlust of Sasori and Hidan. But we must trust Setsu's judgment on this matter. Maybe this shinobi may not be as violent like the other members. Said Pain in his stoic voice. Tell me, has Setsu contacted this person? Asked Pain emotionlessly. Setsu has told me that he has not set up any contact with the candidate, and it will take at least three months before he can discern the persons of interest's location. Notified Conan. And our plans have been set back by a year. In part due to the meddling of the leaf, village and jureya of the Sanin. Continued Conan. Pain didn't seem phased by this news. In fact this was good news they could now be more prepared for the extraction of the Biju. The ripple-eyed man looked up at the falling rain. What is it? Asked Conan generally curious. The winds of change are almost upon us. Said Pain as he looked up at the sky. Soon the world will be one step closer to peace. Said Pain. Orchimaru was coughing and wheezing in his bed. Things did not work out as planned, the body he was inhabiting was already rejecting him. He didn't know how it came to be this way, he had one more year left, one more before he was required to switch bodies again. Sasuke wasn't ready, he wasn't as powerful as he wanted, so his body was off limits and he couldn't take Kabuto's body he was just as important, who else would keep his test subjects alive, and who else could create the medicine for Orochimaru. He coughed again, his form was racked with pain, and he was spitting out blood. He needed to shed his skin again, like a snake, he needed a young rejuvenating being. He wanted the Sharingan yes, but he wanted Sasuke at the peak of his power. There was still time, but Orochimaru was blissfully unaware that time was every shinobi's enemy he just refused to believe it. He heard a knock at the door, and he hailed the person to come in. It was his right hand man Kabuto Yakushi, his most trusted and loyal subordinate. He was carrying a tray filled with bottles and herbs and various utensils for creating medical alchemies. I have brought you medicine Orochimaru Sama said Kabuto with that suave voice of his which makes this vulgar feeling rise up in me. If Kabuto was likened to any animal he would be a snake, extremely deceptive and cunning. Give it to me Kabuto you fool. His or chimer. Kabuto handed him a small vial filled with green liquid, he uncorked the bottle and forced it down his throat. The liquid tasted vile, but if it helped Orochimaru's health he wouldn't care. Orochimaru sama you will have to switch bodies soon, your health is deteriorating every second you wait, Sasuke isn't ready to switch bodies, so you will have to take another in order to extend your life. Assured Kabuto. I suggest taking a body of one of the low level chunin under our command. 
The yes, very good Kabuto, tricky as ever, summon one of the Chunin under the facade of a promotion, and preferably if his body was weak, so that way I can transfer bodies sooner and take over Sasuke-kun's, commanded Orochimaru. Kabuto left to select one weak Chunin for his master. Soon I will have Sasuke-kun's body and, not even the Akatsuki can kill me, and I will also have the Mingekyo. Sasuke-kun you think you could hide such powerful eyes from me? Plotted Orochimaru. It's a good thing he killed the Kaiubi brat all those years ago. It has set the Akatsuki back by a few years, and removed a potential thorn from my side. In a dark room all that was heard was birds chirping, and all that you could see was lightning crackling around. Chidori Sanbone. He yelled the Sasuke as he fired his new Chidori variation at the archery targets, all of them hitting its mark. There were several other targets around the room. Sasuke activated his Chidori again and shouted. Chidori Nagashi. Lightning started sizzling around the young Ichiha the lightning struck the targets destroying them. Sasuke had changed over the two years, he was now taller, and his face was more masculine, and he was lean and muscular. He now wore a white long-sleeved shirt which was open at the torso with a small Ichiha crest near the collar. He now has blue cloth that wraps around his waist that is suspended by a purple rope belt that is tied in a bow and black arm guards that went up to his forearms. His personality hadn't changed much since he left Kanohigakure. He was still arrogant, and he still had dark thoughts about murdering his brother. I don't know what the girls saw in him, but spending years planning to kill someone is pretty emo. But one thing that had changed was that his arrogance had somehow grown, thanks in part to Orochimaru constantly praising him. He now had a mince that only a Chiha can defeat an Ichiha. Thus he didn't pay attention in history class, when they were having a lesson on Hashirama Senju defeating moderate Chiha, Dumbis. His thoughts were on how much progress he made in his training. Orochimaru claimed he was about mid Jonin level, but Jonin level wasn't good enough. His brother Itachi was an Anu captain at the age of 13. And yet Sasuke hadn't reached that level yet. I need more, more power even though I have the Mingekyo, my other skills are not on par with that of Idich's. Then he remembered something, he remembered when he got his Mingekyo and how he got it. In his mind killing Naruto was justified, he needed the power and the opportunity had presented itself to him, and he did just what his brother told him to do. He took the life of his best friend. But now Sasuke had little room in his heart for remorse, when he kills his brother, he would restart his clan and the Ichiha name would be redeemed. It had been three months since Madara said he was going to die. He told Naruto of the news, but the Uzumaki just took it like he normally would, emotionlessly. He did feel sorry that the man who was the closest thing to family he has ever had was going to die, but he didn't show his sorrow at the thought, but hid it behind a blank facade, so not to show the world. Naruto, said Madara. Naruto just stared at him with his active Sharingan, and with that blank look of his that face seemed to unnerve the white half of Setsu. Soon I am going to die in less than a week. Spoke Madara. Naruto didn't respond, nor did her physically respond, he was above such weak things such as sorrow and regret. Today you leave the safety of the hovel and go out into the world. Said Madara. Your mission is to deploy the infinite Tsukiyomi on the world by gathering the Biju and reviving the Jubi, but before you can begin the Eye of the Moon. Plan, you need to eliminate the fake moderate that has been manipulating the Akatsuki in my pawn, Nagato from within the shadows under my own name, and before you revive the Jubi, you have to revive myself, by using my previous Rinnegan, that has been transplanted into Nagato, since your chakra signature is similar to mine in part to the blood transfusion I gave you all those years ago, you will be able to force Nagato, to use the Rin Teni no Jutsu to revive me, continued Madara. I understand what I have to do. Spoke Naruto darkly, and with the utmost confidence and determination his sharing in blazing. Very good, Zetsu will be assisting you with everything, he is now your subordinate, and will obey any command you give out, even your own voice will silence Nagato should Zetsu be ordered by the Akatsuki to do anything, Zetsu is exceptional at infiltration and espionage. Spoke Madara where Zetsu melted from a wall and opening his flight trap appendage. You can count on me, shouted white Zetsu gleefully, the black half seemed to sigh at his white half. But he's fucking weak. His mother at his failed experiment obviously irked by the clone's blatant rudeness, and for interrupting him. Naruto slightly nodded at his teacher who was right about Zetsu, he is weak. Zetsu deflated a little, but quickly broke from his slight depression and smiled widely, happy and cheery as always. Very well. Said Naruto understanding what was required of him. The blonde watched as Madara disconnected himself from the statue via unplugging the tubes, cutting off his chakra supply that was keeping him alive. Now go, my apprentice, my legacy, my heir and do not fail me said Madara and as his final action, the old man grasped at the sockets of his eyes, and pulled out the twin Sharingan from his sockets, and grasped them firmly in his hands just before his life passed on, a Shinigami claiming his soul. I won't sensei, said Naruto. Naruto after two years and three months of living in a dark cave was going to leave. He woke up to a large rock that blocked the exit to the outside world, and his own freedom, if Naruto was hesitant about leaving the hovel, then he wouldn't show it, hesitation was a weakness that didn't have. 
Naruto activated his Eternal Mingekyo Sharingan. His Eternal Mingekyo was a cross between Madara's and his own. Its pattern was three sides with the back of the blade, having a point on it, but it had Madara's pinwheel pattern that was located in the middle of his eye, that surrounded his pupil, only the colors were inverted. The pinwheel was black instead of red, and the concentric tamo were red, and the pupil instead of its circular shape, had a three-pointed shuriken as a pupil. Naruto activated his Susanoo to crush the exit and walk amongst the world. Naruto's was completely white in color, even the fiery aura was white, it had four clawed arms, its ripsage had horizontal spikes on it, and its skull had a pair of forward-facing bull horns and small spikes on its chin and four ominous glowing yellow eyes and sharp fang-like teeth. The Susanoo raised its fist and smashed the rock that was blocking the way with relative ease, using its incredible strength. Naruto still inkist in the Susanoo called out to his subordinate Zetsu. Zetsu get me my armor and weapons, yelled Naruto without looking back at the plant man. Zetsu nodded and went to retrieve the things with utter obedience, like a dog serving its master. Naruto for the first time in two years saw sunlight, it radiated on him, it was warm and bright and full of hope, everything Naruto wasn't, nor will he ever be again. The Uzumaki deactivated his Susanoo and surveyed his surroundings glimpsing the world around him. The first thing he noticed was a large skeleton that looked like it belonged to a great beast that died there long ago, and he also noticed that he was in a basin that was dotted with cliffs and rocky areas. Then he sensed Zetsu return with all the things he asked for. The plant man handed him all the necessary clothes that he would use as a ninja. A few minutes later Naruto was fully dressed in his own signature attire. He wore the same black pants and boots along with the same long blue belt robe. But now he had black armor on his chest along with black metal pieces of armor on his pecs. The armor did little to hide his color figure as you could still see all his rippling muscles move with every twitch. He had pronged black metal shoulder pads and pronged black clawed metal gloves and bracers. And to top it off he had a black ankle length, sleeveless coat, the edges of the coat, were tattered and frayed with bright red flame motifs on the edges along with the symbol of a black, curving dragon with sharp claws, a long tongue, a spiked back and streamlined body surrounded by white on his back, the coat also had a hood and a long collar, that held three silver magatama by strings. The armor was specifically made for Naruto as a birthday present from Madara. It was made from strong, flexible materials that allowed for protection and comfortable movement that didn't restrict his speed or agility, nor was it uncomfortable in certain parts. The strong wind of the forest were now freely blowing Naruto's hair, his short ponytail whipping in the air, and moving as if it had a life of its own. Zetsu walked up behind Naruto with a scroll and katana in hand, where he gave them to Naruto and commented. Very handsome. But the blonde thought that comment would be weird if Zetsu wasn't a clone. I will head to Kanohigakure and see if I can discover the identity of the Madara impersonator. This also gives me the opportunity to infiltrate my father's estate and see if I can get my hands on the flaring thunder god jutsu or any of my father's other jutsu. As much as I hate the man, I can't dispute the fact that when it came to jutsu he was a genius, said Naruto. Okay but you have to make a name for yourself. Soon the Akatsuki only accept S rank shinobi and I have up those chances by telling them that I found someone to fill the void left by Orochimaru, spoke Setsu. Naruto visibly scowled at that name, suffice to say he wasn't Orochimaru's biggest fan. Naruto nodded at Zetsu's plan. Also this graveyard could turn out to be a great base of operations. Zetsu have white Zetsu's hollow out this basin and create a base where everything I would need to utilize assets would be found, such as sleeping arrangements, armory, medical wing and maybe add in a library, also bury the old goat's body and retrieve my eyes from his corpse, commanded Naruto. I will have to go by a different name. The world believes that Naruto Uzumaki is dead. So how does Ryukazi sound, said Naruto. He took his katana sheath and placed it on his back. Zetsu didn't say anything for he was saying the name countless times in his head. I like it, said the two halves at the same time. Goodbye Ryu, said Zetsu before he melted into the ground. Naruto now known as Ryu, breathed in before walking to Kanoha to the south. No one noticed the small tear on his cheek. That tear meant something to Naruto, even though Madara and Naruto argued he still looked up to the man, because he was the closest thing he had to a father and Madara himself knew it. In Konoha, at the main gate, the two eternal gate guards of Konoha, Izumo Kamizuki and Kotetsu Hagging, were playing cards to pass by time, they were easily bored, since no one would come to the gate and check into the village, so you have to pity them, and find it logical that they were even bored. They have been given the certain posts for the last two years, even though the pay was good it of course came with drawbacks. The only people that came through the gate were civilians, traveling merchants and the occasional musician, along with some of their own ninja. But today was going to be very different. Hey Azumo when is something interesting gonna happen? Wine Kotetsu. Got any twos? Be careful what you wish for you might just get. Replied Azumo with a smirk. Go fish. It's just I miss the old days, when we would run around chasing Naru Kotetsu stopped his sentence, before he recited the forbidden name of the village. 
I know, I miss him too, he always made the village seem like a happier place too, but the damn civilians don't know the difference between a kunai, and the scroll it's sealed into, I miss his pranks, I particularly like the one, where he painted the Hokage monument in the middle of the day without anybody seeing him, especially with that hideous orange jumpsuit he used to wear, said Izumo, both men chuckled at the thought of the blonde boy's antics, at the time, that he painted every major clan's underwear orange, chuckled Katetsu at the memory of Naruto and his pranks, their thoughts were soon interrupted when a hooded figure wearing peculiar armor, a black, sleeveless coat and carrying a katana on his back walked up to the front gate and almost passed the registration booth, completely ignoring the two chunin. Hey, shouted Katetsu in order to get the man's attention. The hooded figure stopped in his stride into the village and looked back at the two gate guards, his hood was shrouding his eyes, and the only parts of his face were his mouth and chin. When Izumo and Katetsu looked at him both men could see a man who had the aura of a powerful shinobi, the headed man looked at them all he could see, were weak shinobi who would fall on their own kunais. You have to register before you can enter the village, continued Katetsu. The figure just stared at him blankly, which seemed to unnerve both men, as it felt like the void was staring back at them. Very well, said the figure, he strutted up to the booth, and looked at the two chunin before him. Okay let me get out the papers and you can sign the waivers which will allow you, free pass into the village said Izumo as he scratched his head. The figure just shrugged at what the ninja said. But first we have to ask you your name, name, asked Izumo. Ryu Yakuse, said the figure, but before the two gate guards could do anything they made the mistake of looking into a pair of Sharingan eyes. A few seconds passed and the ninjas dropped to the ground with loud thuds. Kotetsu fell on the floor, while Izumo's head banged against the desk. Naruto slash Ryu checked Izumo's pulse to see if he was dead or alive, sometimes he could accidentally kill people when using his genjutsu, where they became brain dead. Naruto could feel the even rhythm of Izumo's heart, signifying that he was just unconscious. He knew that Anbu teams are dispatched every two hours according to Zetsu's information, so that leaves a limited amount of time to get the information and get out, his father's estate was secondary. Also he was purposely cloaking his chakra, so the barrier core wouldn't detect him, but the Hyuga clan would be a thorn, he'd have to watch out for them. Ryu walked away from the booth, and continued on into the village intent on discovering who his teacher's fake was. Zetsu was right, the village has become lazy in the years of temporary peace, I wonder if the village will fail to function as a hidden village, thought Naruto as he walked through the streets of Konoha. No wonder Orochimaru was able to get in easily, and launch an invasion at the same time. As Ryu walked among the people, they didn't see his face, because of his black hood, but some glanced at him, because of his samurai-like armor and long katana, Naruto didn't care why they were looking at him, all that matters is the fact, that his goal was more important. If I was to take a guess, were the register ninjas and their ninja log it would be around, the Anmu headquarters or, the Hokage Tower. Muse Ryu. Hokage Tower first then head to Anmu HQ, when I don't find anything, shouldn't be that hard. He was so caught up in his thoughts that he didn't register the shoulder that bumped into his. He heard a ridge shout saying watch it buddy. From behind him. A few minutes earlier. Shikamaru, Choji and Kiba were walking down the street, reminiscing about their recent missions and the exciting things they did. And I was all I caught Chao and Hinata was popping the dudes with her Jukin and Shino, well he was just being Shino. Said Kiba excited by wallowing in his own glory. Shikamaru didn't seem to care, and Choji was stuffing his face with chips, again, and he wasn't listening to what Kiba had to say. Troublesome Kiba, why can't you tell a story normally like the writer of this story that we're in? Said Shikamaru lazily, and looking up at the sky, probably at me, the writer. His fellow shinobis looked at Shikamaru as if he had lost all his intelligence which was truly something to behold, as a dumb Shikamaru was hard to imagine. Ah, Shikamaru we're not in a story, spoke Choji as he stopped eating his chips, when he heard what Shikamaru said. Screw what Shikamaru said back to, but he was cut off as his shoulder bumped into his own. Now? Naruto stopped his track and turned to who he bumped into when the person rudely addressed him. And he was a little surprised, when he glanced at Kiba, of all the shinobi he had to bump into it had to be the one covered with fleas and plague with perverted thoughts. Not to mention Kiba's voice was loud, he liked quiet people like Setsu when the plant man was not all hyperactive. Naruto ignored Kiba and kept on walking, he didn't want to deal with people he disliked, besides he had something important to do. Besides he had other problems like finding out about the identity of the fake Madara and taking what was rightfully his. When Ryu started to walk away, that was indeed a move that pissed Kiba off. Hey. Yell Kiba at the black clad mystery person who ignored him and just kept on walking. Um, Kiba I don't think we should pick a fight with him. Said Choji as he was a little intimidated by the samurai like shinobi, especially that pointy katana he had. Maybe you should forget about him. Suggested Choji. No, someone's gotta teach this prick some lessons in manners. Said Kiba as he stomped off after the man. Akamaru who no one had noticed till now just paw palmed his face. His master was always getting into trouble. Maybe the dog should put Kiba on a leash. 
troublesome. Come on Choji let's hope he doesn't get into too much trouble or gets himself killed. Said Shikamaru as he lazily walked after Kiba with Choji and Akamaru following behind him. Naruto had the Hokage Tower in his sight. Things were going smoothly for him and his mission. He then felt a hand clasp his left shoulder which also made him stop in the middle of the road. And when he looked back, it was Kiba who was very angry as he was grinding his teeth and his eyebrow was ticking. Thankfully the HUD Naruto had on still overshadowed his eyes. So nobody could see his Sharingan. The reason why it didn't turn them off is because he was just far too awesome for that. Hey guy I think you should apologize. Said Kiba sternly. Ryu couldn't care less, so he was just going to play dumb, if that was possible for someone like him. Apologize for what, walking on this street? Said Naruto. This statement pissed Kibo off some more, and he felt obliged to choke the man for his rudeness, and also his thoughts were on the line of this fucking smartasses. You think you're funny huh? Said Kibo sarcastically. Ryu just responded with another smartass answer. No I think I'm a comedian, I can be quite funny at times. Answered Ryu with an annoying smirk. What he said just sent Kiba over the edge who was barely restraining his anger. Kiba tightened his grip on Naruto's armored shoulder, and was digging his claws into the armor which was barely scratching it. Listen here, you will. But he was cut off as Ryu got out of his grip by spinning to his back, grabbed his right arm, and pinned him to the ground with his left hand clutching Kiba's skull, and his right hand holding Kiba's arm in the air. Everyone that was on the street turned and saw some stranger pinning Kiba on the ground, as the Ninkan user was currently eating dirt. Holy shit he's fast, I barely saw him move let alone flinch, who is this guy? Thought Kiba as he all he could see, was the dirty ground below him. Shikamaru and Choji arrived along with Akamaru, where the two shinobi and the ninja dog all sighed at the scene in front of them. Shikamaru was right on the money about Kiba getting in trouble. Troublesome, ah, uh, mister, could you get off my friend, whatever he's done, then I formally apologize for it, troublesome. Muttered Shikamaru as this whole situation was troublesome to him, in fact his wild existence was troublesome. Naruto just looked back at Shikamaru and he sighed at the shadow user, he let go of Kiba who scurried off, and rejoined his two friends and dog. Keep your dog on a shorter leash, I have little tolerance for stupidity and ignorance. Spat Ryu at the three shinobi. Shikamaru and Choji were taken back by this comment and decided to back down from the fight. Kiba just scowled at his dog comments and growled a little, unfortunately for him Naruto heard the growl. Watch it mutt before I neuter you. Threatened Naruto while leaking a bit of killer intent which made everyone on the street sweat a little and take a step back in fear. Naruto restarted his trek back to the Hokage Tower not looking behind him, not bothered to look behind him. Wait, yelled Shikamaru which was weird, because Shikamaru was never a loud person. Naruto halted in his stride and turned to Shikamaru. What's your name? asked Shikamaru. Ryu Yakuze, said Naruto simply. Deciding he had enough with idiots Ryu turned his back on the trio of shinobi, and continued on his original path too towards the Hokage Tower. But Shikamaru narrowed his eyes at him, as if there was something about him that was strange. With the Hokage Tower in sight, Naruto took to the rooftops, and he whispered the name of a very useful infiltration jutsu. Hiding with camouflage jutsu. Naruto disappeared from existence, but in fact made himself invisible to the naked eye. Naruto practiced this jutsu with Black Setsu who was an amazing sensor, and could detect chakra from even lands as far away as the land of water. This caused Naruto's skill with the jutsu to rival that of Mew, the second Tsuchikage where he was utterly invisible except for the extremely small air current distortion that would happen. Ryu snuck into the tower with relative ease getting past the Anbu easily who were busy doing what Anbu did best. He traveled the halls of the tower in relative silence, since it was the only thing that could be able to give away his position, since no one could smell him or sense him, see him. But they could touch him, but with a showering in it wouldn't be a problem, because of his skill, and you'd be lucky, just to find him in the air current distortion. However Naruto couldn't use this jutsu, while in combat, so it was designed more for tactical espionage rather than combat. Then he found the door he was looking for which led him to his objective, the ninja registration log. He opened the door and tried to hold back side of relief, since no one was inside. He closed the door behind him and deactivated his invisibility, allowing his form to be viewed. Luckily there was a computer in the room for processing shit. He sat in the chair and hacked into the account, the password was number coded with 4 digits, and with his enhanced vision could see the fingerprints on the pad. Which had barely passable encryption since they didn't protect their information that well, but since this was the least guarded area in the village it was to be expected. He narrowed the list of results to any Achiha disappearances over the last 30 years. Based upon the evidence of the Kyubi attack 15 years ago, this person had the Sharingan to control the Kaiubi, there was no other explanation, since Hashirama Senju was dead, and only Nagato could control Biju with his Rinnegan, but the leader of the Akatsuki was nowhere near the village during the attack according Zetsu. He narrowed the field of information with Ichiha disappearances because of the Ichiha massacre at the hands of Itachi, there was only one person that survived, and that was Sasuke, so if there were any survivors they weren't in the village at the time. 
but it turned out all the Chiha were massacred well except Sasuke, but forget about that emo. And this was all too easy there had been only been one real disappearance. Abito Uchiha. Said Naruto as he examined the name, he clicked on the profile, and an image of Abito appeared. To Naruto he looked like an idiot with those goggles of his, but Madara taught him that looks were deceiving, and his sensei was the prime example. Even though Madara was an old goat he was still powerful. That was what Naruto couldn't dispute about the mummy Sinkyu and he first started training. He bet the old man could kick his ass back then, but that was different now, since he could have killed the man whenever he wanted at the time. He broke his thoughts over Madara and returned to reading Abito's profile. Died on a mission during the final period of the Third Shinobi World War, trying to rescue teammate Rinnehar, was crushed under a rock avalanche by enemy ninja, but not before giving his Sharingan to Kakashi Hadake. Naruto gritted his teeth at the man, so that was how Kakashi got the Sharingan, and this Abito Ichiha was a student of Minato Namikaze, Naruto's father. But he was never recovered, presumed to be deceased. So Bido is the fake moderate, but still he must have got out of the rock avalanche, and later wouldn't return to Konoha afterwards, what kept him away. Then Naruto heard the click of the door behind him, he erased everything that was on the computer, and slid back into his invisibility jutsu. He watched silently within the room as the Hokage's secretary, Shizune, came in and started fiddling with the computer and printing out some documents of some random shinobi. Naruto took this opportunity to escape the tower, because he now had the time to go to another place. Now with the fake Madara's identity in his hands he had enough time to break into the Yuandaime's estate and retrieve his jutsu. At the main gate with the knocked out Izumo and Katetsu and Amu team was surveying the area, when their sights landed on the Chunin. One purple haired cat masked Amu gained a tick mark on her forehead, because of the supposed laziness of the two ninja. She made her way down and slapped Izumo at the back of the head, yelling wake up. But it didn't work, so she instead started shaking him like a ragdoll, until he would awaken from his nap. However nothing the Anbu tried worked as Izumo was still fast asleep. Realizing that something was wrong the Anbu called out to her teammates. Assistance. Yelled the Anbu. Her teammates came over to her post ion and checked over the two shinobi. They've been knocked out with genjutsu. Said a bird masked Anbu with spiky sandy hair as he checked over the unconscious shinobi. It takes a master at genjutsu to do something like this. Whoever did this their skill in genjutsu can rival Kurnai or even Itachi Chiha. You three will stay here while I report this to the Hokage. Finished the Anbu and a series of yeses was heard before he shunched into the Hokage's office to inform her of what has happened, and he believed they had just been infiltrated by their enemies. Tsunade was sitting in her office as always, Sakura's training had been pleasing she had already mastered medical ninjutsu, and was now advancing particularly well with her amazing strength. There hadn't been any trouble in the village since that plant like Akatsuki member that was so interested on dead people. She was brought out of her musings when her Anbu agent bird appeared in her office kneeling in her office. Okagi saw me not five minutes ago did my team and I find the two gate guards, Izumo Kamizuki and Kitetsu Hagin, knocked out by Genjutsu. Spoke the bird masked Anu. What? Question bellowed Tsunade as she stood up from her chair and slammed her hands on her desk. I quickly deduced that they were knocked out less than an hour and a half ago by a master of Genjutsu. I think it might be Itachi Ichiha. Informed the Anbu. Then another boar masked Anbu agent appeared in the same kneeling position as the other one. Hokage sama someone has broken into the Yuandaime's Hokage's private estate. Informed a boar masked Anbu. This was giving Tsunade a terrible migraine all from those few sentences. That they're all available Anbu units, and get me team Kurunai, team Asuma and Kakashi. If an enemy of the village gets their hands on the Horatian then it's bad news for us. Go, roared Tsunade as the Anbu disappeared to confront the intruder. At the Namikaze estate, Naruto was making his way down into his father's library. Hoping to gather any useful jutsu, but he needed to get one in particular jutsu that was worth a lot in the long run. Breaking into the estate was easy for him. The outer gate was dotted with different ceiling arrays that he was easily able to destroy thanks to the Uzumaki clan scroll setsu which retrieved from the ruins of Yuzashiagakur. He knew he had alerted the Anbu of the village, so he had to hurry and retrieve what he wanted. And thank the gods there it was, sitting on a pedestal the scroll on how to learn the Horatian, he opened it up and scanned it with his Sharingan, and it was the real deal. How foolish to just leave one of the most powerful jutsus in the world, and showcase it like a trophy, maybe his father was a prideful being. He heard footsteps behind him, and a loud halt he could sense three Anbu members waiting to attack him by how their chakra was flaring, no one he knew from his past, so he could kill them without feeling remorse, what was he thinking, he wouldn't feel remorse, even if he killed his own friends. He unsealed three kunai from his left wrist, and charged them with lightning chakra increasing their speed and cutting power. He threw them at the Anbu who had little time to react before they dropped dead with holes in their chests. Ryu ran out of the estate and into courtyard as he tucked the Horatian scroll away. Then he was surrounded by another team of Anbu going through some fast hand signs Naruto breathed in and yelled. Fire release, demon lantern, and him were fireball which took the shape of one heads, where they flew at the team of Anbu with great speed. 
When they hit their targets, they burned the Anbu members giving them 4th degree burns from the heat that bypassed their armor and they were quickly set aflame from the jutsu. He ran some more, and came across teams Kurinai and Asuma who jumped out in front of him. Then Kiba recognized the man as the guy that bumped into him. Hey I know you. You that guy. Yelled Kiba pointing at Naruto and got a bark of approval from his partner Akamaru. This got confused looks from everyone minus Choji and Shikamaru. So you remember me, you're not as dumb as I first assumed. Said Ryu quite harshly which made Kiba go red in the face and hold out his fist in front of him. Troublesome. Muttered Shikamaru as he combed his hair with his hand. I can't use the Rasengan it would give away my identity and I have to limit the amount of shadow clones I use. This is so troublesome. Thought Naruto. Which caused Shikamaru to sneeze. Naruto went through some hand signs faster than anyone could see, and channeled chakra into his fingers. Wind style, wolf claw cyclone jutsu, yelled Naruto as he slashed the air with his left creating four jagged blades of wind that howled like wolves. Everyone there barely got out of the way as the wind blades traveled past them, and saw down four trees that were behind them creating clean cut chunks of wood. However Team Kurenai failed to detect four other howling blades that were coming at them, apparently you can create eight claws of wind not four. The team barely had time to brace themselves for the coming wind, and they were certainly going to die. Earth release, earth wall, yelled a voice. Then an earth wall with four bulldog heads popped up in front of Team Kurenai, protecting them from the wind claws. However the wind sharpened blades cut deep into the wall, if it wasn't chakra enhanced earth then it would have cut clean through, it was a miracle, that the wall held its stability, because it was one inch away from penetrating. Takashi appeared before everyone his sharing and blazing, and holding a kunai in hand ready to battle the combatant. Is everyone alright? asked Kakashi. Yeah we're fine. Answered Asuma as he jumped next to Kakashi. Okay what can you tell me about his guy that I don't already know? Inquired Kakashi and Shikamaru answered. His name is Ryu Yakuse. Everyone looked at him with white eyes, surprised that he even knew the person. Kiba, Choji and I bumped into him earlier. Continued Shikamaru which made everyone nod their heads in understanding. What we have seen already is that he has a wind and fire affinity, that katana on his back signifies at least expertise in kenjutsu, but other than that we have no idea of his other skills. All of those are correct, however there are a few things that you left out, said Ryu but he was interrupted as a tree grew behind his back, and its branches coiled itself around him. Damn, I was hoping to not reveal my Sharingan, but it looks like I have to, if I want to escape this genjutsu, thought Naruto sadly, as if he pitied whoever trapped him in a genjutsu. Kurenai then appeared from the trunk of the tree kunai in hand ready to slit Naruto's throat. Demonic illusion, mere heaven and earth change. Thought Naruto as he looked into Kurenai's eyes. Now it was Kurenai who was trapped by a tree. But that wasn't what shocked her, it was the fact that the man before her had the Sharingan. Whispered Kurenai. Kurenai then found herself back in her own body, and she turned her head to see Hinata funneling her chakra into her, breaking her from the genjutsu. But she had to relay this new information it was vital everyone knew about the new development. Everyone Genjutsu doesn't work against him, shouted Kurenai. Why, shouted Kiba back. Because he has the Sharingan, screeched Kurenai. Everyone was immediately shocked by this, another Sharingan user, but how all the Ichiha corpses were burned, so someone wouldn't be able to transplant the Sharingan into their eyes. So how did this guy have it? And who was he really? The wind seemed to react to everyone's shock as it frayed about more frantically. The chin-length strands that framed the sides of Naruto's face fluttered around and the strands that fell between his eyes and parted at his nose ruffled a little. His black cloak with flame motifs whipped in the air wildly. Yeah, I have the Sharingan, it was a gift from someone important to me. Said Ryu cockily. Oh yeah and who? Shouted Kiba. Why does it matter, the person is dead, just like you're going to be soon. Said Naruto darkly. He went through some hand signs. Lightning release. Beast running pack jutsu. Bellowed Naruto as he held out the palms of his hands, as ten pale wolves made of lightning, rushed at the group of shinobi. Naruto was controlling the wolves thanks to lightning chakra connected to his hands, and he was able to control the wolves, and have them attack the group of shinobi. Asuma in gratitude to his quick thinking, saved the lives of his team and Shino, by utilizing a wind jutsu. Wind style, wind dome jutsu. Yelled Asuma as a wind dome shielded the five shinobi. But the others weren't as lucky. The wolves were sharper than katanas, and they easily clawed past everyone else, causing eviscerating damage to all of them. 5 against 10, including Akamaru, wasn't a good number, whenever they dodge. They were attacked by the striding onslaught of the hounds, and the lightning numbed their bodies causing them to become slower, and their reactions to be slower than they were. How could they escape this? If they didn't escape, they would surely die. Ryu was about to finish them off when a shadow above him caused him to look up, and he was blinded by the light of the sun, where a shadow hovering before it could be clearly seen. Heavenly foot of pain, yelled the shadow. Naruto cancelled his jutsu, and with his Sharingan narrowly dodged the chakra enhanced falling axe kick that would have probably have crushed his skull. 
Dust instantly filled the area. It was so thick that only a Hyuga's Byakugan could see through it. Naruto was unfazed by the dust stinging his eyes as he just watched the handiwork of someone he used to call Ba-chan. When the dust cleared, it revealed the silhouette of Sanade Senju, the go Daime Hokage. Naruto would never forget about that monster strength anytime soon. But he just smirked this date turned out to be quite entertaining, and made his day all that more interesting. Who are you? And why did you attack my ninja? Spoke Sanade with a voice that proved she was worthy of being a leader. Naruto just smirked weren't they the ones that attacked him, he couldn't remember. Deciding to use psychological warfare he knew the perfect way to get under her skin and make her lose focus. Is that all you got? A simple strong axe kick. Said Ryu. Which caused a frown to appear on Sanade's face. I understand that in your old age, you're not as strong as you once were, but I didn't know old age had gotten to you this bad. In fact I think I see gray hair too, and maybe a few wrinkles. Commented Naruto. Every man in the world silently grimaced for their fellow male for making such a stupid comment. Tsunade's eyes were overshadowed by her hair, and flames of righteous female fury were flickering off her form and scorching the ground. Anbu executed him on the spot, thundered Tsunade. Multiple Anbu that were hidden in the trees jumped out, and drew their katanas on the samurai-like man. Naruto unsheathed his own katana, and channeled his wind affinity through it marker it a lot sharper. The Anbu soldiers didn't stand a chance as their own katanas were cut in half, and they soon joined the weapons as they were cleaved from the chests to their shoulders, their blood staining the grass they were standing on. Those that witnessed it were shocked at the power this man had as he was taking on the Black Ops, as if they were Genin, and to add on some wood of the pyre he had the sharring in which made him even more deadly as he could clearly see their moves clearly. Then Ryu heard the sound of whistling as two green blurs attacked him saying, Dynamic Entry. If it wasn't for the pronged bracers that Naruto was wearing, protecting him, he'd probably have some broken bones in his arms which was in Naruto's mind, not a good development. Naruto flew back a few meters away, and his feet shaved the ground as he regained his footing. Well if it isn't the freak with the large eyebrows and his mini clone. Said Ryu scornfully with that annoying smirk of his. This caused Guy and Lee to frown at the nicknames the man gave them. They soon fell into their respective taijutsu stances ready to combat the man. Come Lee let us fan our flames of youth and show our adversary what it's like to fight taijutsu masters. Said Guy. Oh and Lee I'm not sure if anyone has noticed yet but. Said Guy as he whispered in Lee's ear which was loud enough for everyone to hear. This man is dangerous. This caused a mass amount of sweat drops to appear on everyone's heads. Oh excellent advice guy sensei, I'll write it down. Said Lee as he took out a pencil and notebook and started writing down guy's words. This caused the sweat drops to grow in size. Then guy socked Lee across the face and shouting you idiot. You don't have time to write when you're in the middle of a battle. Said guy proudly and with a glint in his pearly white teeth. Ah even more excellent advice I'll write it down. Said Lee as he continued writing not minding that his teacher had hit him. Ryu was watching from his position slightly amused, if they weren't shinobi then they would be good clowns in a circus performance. From behind Naruto a large force of 20 Anbu came rushing towards him. He sealed his katana in his right hand seal, and went through some hand signs ending on the tiger sign. Fire release, blast wave wild dance, shouted Naruto as he expelled fire from his mouth creating a massive spiraling fire vortex. The Anbu were trapped within the vortex of intense heat and flames, they had nowhere to go, or they would be burned by the intense holocaust. When Ryu ended his jutsu he saw all the destruction he created only the ashes of the Anbu were left. Using this time to escape Naruto deactivated his weight seals that were placed on his gloves, boots and belt. And he took off at breakneck speeds that even amazed Gaai and Lee. Naruto was jumping across the buildings and architecture of his home village, intent on leaving as his position was compromised. One more Anbu soldier appeared in front of him with kunai in hand, but Naruto went through some hand seals to quickly silence his life. Lightning release. Thunder lion shockwave. He yelled Naruto as he held out his hand as a wave-like vortex made of lightning with the head of a lion in the center, hit the Anbu head on, as the unfortunate shinobi was obliterated by the lightning. Ryu continued running out of the village without any interference. Camouflage Jutsu. Thought Naruto as he disappeared while running through the village. The Kanoha forces that were chasing after him lost his presence not long after he used his jutsu, because of the invisibility it offered him. Tsunade watched as the black-clad man vanished from everyone's sight, the last thing she saw was the symbol on the back of his coat. The image was a battle-ready black dragon, eager to accept any challenge. Kuro Ryu. She said within her mind as the dragon symbol disappeared along with the person wearing the coat. Tsunade and her forces stopped their pursuit, because that had just seemingly lost any trace of the intruder. Banbu. Take all the wounded to the hospital and have Asuma and Shikamaru meet me in my office in 10 minutes. Commanded Tsunade and the Anbu team shunchened away taking the wounded to the hospital. 10 minutes later after Kakashi, Kurenai, Hinata and Kibo along with Akamaru were taken to the hospital to have emergency surgery. 
Tsunade was in her office and standing before her were Suma and Shikamaru, the top two ranking officers that faced the Black Dragon without any injuries. Tell me everything you learned about this Ryu Yakuze when battling with him, ordered Tsunade. And Shikamaru stepped forward ready to answer her. From what we learned from our fight Hokage-sama, is that Ryu Yakuze has three nature affinities, fire, wind, and lightning and he displayed immense control over each, said Shikamaru. He also seemed adept at Kenjutsu as he used the Kyo Tenchi Ten against Kurnai Sensei with relative ease, but I'm not sure if he did that himself or the Sharingan did it for him, oh and yeah, he has the Sharingan, said Shikamaru. But everyone in the room thought he just said he had the Sharingan. Then Asuma stepped forward and he took a drag out of his cigarette. From what I was able to observe, is that he has extraordinary stealth and infiltration skills, as he was able to slip past the Anbu in the village with effortless skill, coupled with the fact that he is a master at Fujutsu, as he was able to get into the Yuan Daime Hokage's estate which is known for having every kind of defense seal there is. He was also a master at Kenjutsu as well as the way he wielded that katana had the look of a master with years of experience. We weren't able to see Hitaijutsu skills because we engaged him in long-ranged attacks, but his speed was tremendous as he outran Guy and Lee easily, and dodged your chakra enhanced falling axe kick. Informed Asuma, and he used psychological warfare to great effort, when he um, called you old. Said Asuma and Sanade gained a tick mark, but right now this was not the time to be punching Asuma through a wall and he's quite the smartest. Tsunade sighed this man everything they learned about him, about the dragon, spoke of a man trained in every art of shinobi combat and warfare, a man trained to kill. And what of his physical appearance? Asked Tsunade. We weren't able to get much because he wore a hood that shadowed most of his face. Said Shikamaru. But I will tell you what I know, he has light skin, in between tanned and pale and sun-kissed golden blonde hair. Is it it? Asked Tsunade. Yeah. Replied Shikamaru. The physical information wasn't much, but it was useful enough. Okay, I will be adding Ryu Yakuze into the bingo book immediately, since he was able to kill numerous Anbu and injure critically injure Kakashi, I will be placing him as a high rank shinobi in the bingo book, said Tsunade. Shizune, called Tsunade to her assistant. And Shizune came running into the room with a frantic look on her face. Yes Tsunade-sama, asked Shizune. Create a profile on everything we have collected on Ryu Yakuze. Commanded Tsunade as she folded her arms under her sizable bust. Yes, Tsunade-sama. Acknowledged Shizune. Tsunade let her thoughts wander. She was just hoping that Ryu Yakuze didn't acquire what she hoped he didn't acquire. A few days later Zetsu was reading the latest update on the Kanaha's bingo book. But only one shinobi really caught his attention. Name, Ryu Yakuze. Title, Kuro Ryu. Gender, Male. Ninja rank, S rank. Age, Unknown. Physical description and clothing. Light-skinned and sun-kissed golden hair. Wears black samurai-like armor and a black coat with bright red flame motifs on the tattered edges, along with six magatama on the cloak's collar and light blue rope belt. Has a symbol of a black, battle-ready dragon on the back of the cloak. Wanted for, mass murder, robbery, failed assassination of Akage, attempted murder of various Kanohenin. Skills, empty. Three nature affinities. Fire, wind and lightning, well-versed in multiple high-ranking ninjutsu and multiple high-ranking unknown ninjutsu. Taijutsu is unknown except for incredibly fast speed. Genjutsu is a known master of genjutsu. Master of Fuinjutsu. Master of self assassination and infiltration. Keki Ginkai. Sharingan. Warning. Engage with extreme caution. Wanted dead or alive. 90 million Ryo. Well, Naruto doesn't take long to draw attention to himself, said the white half. Yes, already he has become an S rank shinobi in the bingo books, and his bounty is admirable too. Said the black Setsu should we inform Pain that we have found a potential recruit. Said white Setsu. Yes, although did he have to reveal his Sharingan, it was too soon to reveal his trump card. Complained black Setsu at the thought of revealing such important information. Pain was looking over Amagakure again, just watching his people go by. Zetsu had yet to find the promising recruit that he would recruit into the Akatsuki and Nagato's patience was wearing thin. Then Conan walked into the room, her black gaze on Yahiko's corpse which acted as the main body of Pain. Has Zetsu contacted you about the potential recruit? Asked Pain. Yes, Zetsu has told me of the candidate, and he's even given me the new edition of Kanaha's bingo book, on page 9 is our potential recruit. Said Conan as she opened the book to the appropriate page. His name is Ryu Yakuse. Said Conan, and then she listed down the skills and qualities of Ryu, and Nagato listened intently to what she had to say. Zetsu has the perfect eye for talent not only that, but he has the Sharingan, he could make the perfect asset, have Zetsu enlist the aid of Ryu Yakuse, immediately. Commanded Pain in his stow persona a little eager, to meet the ninja known as Yakuze. Very well, said Conan as she walked out the room through the door to meet up with Zetsu. 
Pain gazed out at Amagakure contemplating the next move of the Akatsuki. In a few months they would be hunting the Bijuru, so to create a weapon that would bring about peace through Pain. He finally made it, all that running and walking, and now he was back at the mountain's graveyard. His mission was a success he found out the identity of the fake Madara, Abido Ichiha and retrieved the Horation. While finally testing his power against the Shinobi of the Leaf, and he was pleased with the results, this was one thrilling day for him. But he knew that his work wasn't finished, it had only just begun. Then Zetsu appeared next to him in his usual manner and said, Welcome to the Akatsuki, said the two halves at the same time. Naruto smiled to himself, his signature dark, sickly smiles. Now it was time to dispose of the fake Madara, and become one step closer to achieving the Eye of the Moon plan, it was all going according to plan. Thanks for listening. I do hope you enjoyed. If you want a next part of this video, like subscribe, and comment down below, and turn on that bell notification, and also check out the other videos that I have created, and enjoy. See you in the next video. Peace.